Hello everyone, this is Derek with Danger Zone Graphics and this is the uh, Type 95 Japanese tank that we're working on developing and I wanted to do a little bit of an update video on what we have going on here. So the first thing is, is we're offering this right now as a 1-6 scale model tank with non-functioning tracks and a turnable torque with no figure but a figure can drop down into the top of the torque and this is what you get in the kit multiple parts here that you can glue together the track as you can see is three different pieces all right and then you have the lower hole the upper hole and the torque the guns will be printed separately and you glue them in place um the get down here to the needy greedy here I gotta take away all this stuff so we can see in here. Uh, there's a good one there. Let's pull that one out so you can see the turret is just a drop down and it just rides on this island. This piece here that I took away has a hole in it. But uh, what I'm trying to do is get to the lower hole here so I can show you real quick. Let me take away these pieces. Take away all this stuff. And all these parts are what you're going to get in the kit. Alright, so you can start to see the lower hole here. Let me get rid of this top armor plate here. Let's get rid of this piece here. And get rid of these. Where's this guy at here? Okay, here he's right here. Alright, so here is the lower hole of the model. It's just going to be some solid plastic. Let me move away this track right here all right so that is the lower hole and you're gonna get these three parts in your kit for your lower hole of the tank these three pieces here is what I'm talking about and you would just glue them together and then you would glue your your tank tracks together and pop them onto these right here okay so what we're doing is when you build your kit I highly recommend that when you glue this lower hole to your upper portion of your body that you don't use a lot of glue. It's just a static model. It doesn't need a lot of glue. I suggest you don't use a lot of glue because we are in the works of making an update on the lower hole that will allow you to convert this thing to RC. So here's all your upper pieces. They're all still the same. Let me remove them that we can see down in here and what I have so far. So what we have is a lower hole where these three pieces are hollowed out and I have it set up already for some motors and I will post the link for the motors that you can get to put in here that these are already made to fit that motor. And my plan is to make an access hatch here that will be something you can get into to, uh, you know, to, to gain access to the motors. And then another one here in the middle or towards the rear for you to put your batteries, receivers, and all that. So you would glue all this top lip, which is about five millimeters wide. This top lip right here is about five millimeters wide all the way around to the lower hole um, like I said this is in the works it's you know fluid it's changing I'm changing it daily uh, but this is this is going to happen I'm getting really close to starting to print the upgraded pieces to test the uh, track fitment and I actually made another video showing what I was using for tracks and track cogs and rollers um, I still got to draw the uh, idler arms here um, and I gotta draw these rollers here but I've already got in the body the holes in position for where those will attach so here's the uh, roller and here's where the idler arm will go and these are for six millimeter bolts so when I draw this up these will attach with some six millimeter bolts okay the back roller attaches into this body with six millimeter bolt 
with a six millimeter bolt as well, uh, socket head bolts. And uh, the plastic will grip the bolt and not let go. So the rollers will spin freely. And we're actually gonna use some ball bearings on the rollers. Uh, and, and all these rollers here, these will just not be ball bearing, but the main rollers will be ball bearing and then the drive wheels will be attached to the motors, which is screwed in to the, the space here of the tank. Um, I will update you when I have more and I've got to take this video that I just made and glue it to the video that I have of the uh, cogs that I'm working on and I will get back to you guys as soon as I have uh, a little bit more work done on it. But this is where I'm at so far. And uh, you can get these at Danger Zone Graphics on Facebook. Uh, just message us. We are already selling the model kit now for $750. And the updated with the tracks and track assembly will be an additional cost, of course, and I, at this time, do not have the price for that. These are the motors I'm looking at for the Japanese tank. Uh, you can get them on Amazon, and they're $15 a piece, and they have several different sizes. I'm gonna kind of show you that. And sizes, I mean, they're all the same size, same housing. There is gear reduction built onto them and they, they come in different RPMs with different torque variations. So in other words, the lower the RPM, the higher the torque will be. The 30 RPM engine has about 15 pounds of torque and the 100 RPM engine, or I say engine, motor, the 100 RPM motor has like, I think it's around seven pounds of torque um, anyhow, you can click on each one and then it'll give you the specs here below. Let me find the 100, 100 RPM. So now I can click that. You can go down here and it will tell you the information on that. The 100 RPM has got a 3.6 kg torque rating, okay? So you would have to convert that if you want to know what it is in pound per inches. But the, the nice thing about these in uh, little motors here is they gave me all the specs here for the sizing. And this is where I drew uh, in the blueprint of my tank. This is where I got my pattern to set up the motors. So they are brush motors. You can use some like a 60 amp, probably a 60 amp or so. Uh, ESC electronic uh, controller from a crawler. That's my plan to put this in there and then set it up on an uh, airplane remote control with both uh, cyclets uh, left and right to be able to drive the tank forward and backward independent of each other on the tracks. Um, but uh, this is what this right here is what I have designed to fit the lower tank hole. Uh, of course, if you want something different, you'll have to modify the, t the uh, mounting and everything. But this is what I have found, and um, I have gotten some good reviews from some guys on Facebook who are already using these same motors, and they're like 1.6 Panzers. So the problem is, is nobody told me what size, uh, you know, if they're using a 100 RPM or a 30 or a 60 or an 80 RPM motor. Um, and I think a lot of that's going to depend on how easy it is to turn the tracks. And since I don't have mine printed yet and all test fitted, I don't know, you know, the tension, the amount of tension that will be on the track yet. So uh, now that I know I've got a, a, a very wide variety of motors to choose from, I will go ahead and continue on with making the track system and uh, assembling that so I can see how much how much pressure and tension it takes to actually turn it and then add the weight of the upper hull to the uh, tank to see what the overall weight is and I will make my decision on which motor to get uh, based on that information. Um, when you buy the, uh, the tank uh, RC conversion uh, lower hull, I will give the information to where 
uh, where to get these brown moss hair, the link on Amazon. And I found several sellers on Amazon selling them. Uh, there's a, right off the bat, there's two or three uh, different vendors selling the same motor. So that that's a very good optimistic sign that, uh, that you know, they'll be around when you're ready for it. This is the uh, Japanese tank working on modifying an actual functional track system. So what I got here is I have a six millimeter hole running through this cog. I'm gonna just try to move the assist a little bit. I'll move the body. It's all right, we can move the body, that's fine. Anyway, so I got a hole going six millimeters in both from the cog and the, the body. And um, I have been working on the track assembly or the track wheel over here. Um, I got so much files and stuff open. The, the cog had to be stretched 200% the cog and the tracks, 200% on the y-axis to get it to be the correct width for this tank and the roller assembly uh, the rollers for this matches the size diameter wise you can see here I'm going to remove my drive wheel. So this is the original tracks for the uh, tank and now uh, with my drive wheel checking the diameters they do match. So I didn't have to play with the scale on the diameter I just had to make it wider as you can see right here it wasn't wide enough. Uh, stretching it to 200% makes it wide enough. So I think it's going to be a, a go on doing this on my tank on getting the tracks to be functional um, I got to draw I got to draw the uh, idler arms for this assembly to hold uh, to hold the rollers the, uh, the smooth roller they'll be positioned you know, down here towards the bottom along here. So I gotta design design the idler arm and draw the idler arm for it. These are some pictures of the top tour and the whole upper left section already printed so you can see for reference how this project is coming along.